Okay, good morning. Oh. Um, so I'll start by first talking a little bit about weight control and how we at BS Engineering defines weight control. Just give a little background before we dive into the features of the software. So we divide weight control into three main blocks. The first is what we call the estimation. Estimation of weight and center of gravity with the purpose of establishing what we call a weight budget. Now, this phase starts immediately in the project and ends when the contract is entered. The second phase is tracking and monitoring, which means gather the most up-to-date weight information available at the current time, including recalculation of unidentified weights and estimates. So we say after you've entered the contract, you're doing following up and tracking even if you are still doing estimating. We don't care the method you're using, but you're in the tracking phase because you have a weight budget that you're now following up against. So you compare, monitor current weights against budgets, analyze trends, and predict future growth in this phase. And also you identify, explain, and set responsibilities for deviations between budgets and aspect weights. Okay, these are the, are the main points of, of this phase. And then the final phase that we think is very important, but very often uh, neglected, a sin of omission, is the generation of aspect experience data after the ship is launched. When you launch your vessel, and hopefully you find out that everything is fine, make sure that you complete your weight model. If it lacks 5% or however much, fill in the rest, do the afterworks, do verification, structure, and correction of data, and gather the lessons learned, because your experience data is your most valuable data for estimating new projects. So this is how we, in our company, look at it. So we define weight control this um, way, and then the next question, obviously, is, well, why is this important? And I'd like to reiterate for you, because I'm sure you know a lot of this from before, but this is some of the reason it's important. Cost estimation. You know, weight is the most important input for a cost estimation. So if you think cost is important, weight is important. Um, one of our long-time customers, Ulstein Design and Ulstein Ship Weight back home in Norway, they sell, say that the main reason we're doing weight, weight estimation is for cost. Because the cost determines if we're going to build the ship or not. So if we're not going to build the ship, we don't care about stability. So cost comes before stability. Another reason that weight control is important is to fulfill contract specification that you have with your clients. Because either in the contract there is a direct number of the weight and CG that you have to fulfill, but if not, there are for sure parameters that is directly related to the weight and CG, um, and most notably, dead weight, speed, maybe a combination. So it's important, of course, to fulfill contract specification. Then, Equally important is to fulfill statutory regulations. Weight is the most important parameter for your stability, strength, and seat keeping. Reports, sorry, um, reports and documentation. You need to do weight control because you need to know when you are doing the detailed engineering and building that you are meeting the budget. And if you are not, you need to find out as soon as possible that there is a deviation. Also, the vessel that you have estimated when you enter the contract, that's not the vessel you're ending up building because there will be change orders. Right? And it's important that you document these change orders and their impact on the weight and CG. And this is also weight control, of course. In addition to that, 
Weight control means generate input for operations like lifting, sea launch, and again, do weight control to improve future estimations of your weight. I have another slide on why weight control is important. Weight control isn't limited to shipbuilding. They have it in aerospace, in uh, uh, vehicle industries, offshore industries. Uh, and Franklin Johnson and Locke and Martin, he put it this way. Weight status is a fundamental indicator of technical problems, design health, project morale, effectiveness of leadership, and program accomplishment. I, I like this uh, quote. I think it summarizes very well the impact of weight control and weight status. And finally, um, weight control is important to avoid weight disasters like this. Uh, I'm not sure if our Swedish friend from yesterday is still here, I, so I apologize for using a Swedish example, but you probably know the Vasa ship. A very well documented uh, weight control disaster happened in 1628. But this is not uh, something of the past. I could have brought up very fresh examples here. In the last decades, there's been naval projects which, be, which has cost billions of euros because they missed the weight on CG. So this is very much um, alive, so to say. OK, so that was the introduction about weight control. And um, ship weight is a weight control tool. And ship weight has weight and CG um, tools for the whole construction and for the whole process. It's not limited to certain areas. We have parametric estimation. We have monitoring and tracking functions. We do a lot of uh, additional functions like weight distribution, inertia and duration, and reporting. And I'll walk you briefly through uh, a few of these. We've been doing this for more than 20 years. We started out in 1996. And in 1996, we formed a a company based upon ship weight it was our main product then. It's still our main product today. And it's in use at shipyards, design firms, and navies all over the world. So we do estimation, tracking, and monitoring, and something I haven't um, mentioned so far, also during operation. And I'm not talking about loading computers, but uh, for example, one of our largest customers, Equinor, a former Statoil in Norway, they use shipweight mainly for maintaining the lightweights on their fixed platforms in the North Sea. We have roughly, uh, I think we're close to 60 active companies, 200 users around the world, and it's used on a very large variety of vessels, literally spanning from sailing yachts in one end to aircraft carriers and submarines in the other end, and everything in between. Literally all types of vessels floating and including um, also vessels that, uh, or vehicles I should say, that, um, and, and, and fixed platforms. So it's a tool for all weight engineering. You can start using ship weight in the concept design. And in concept design, parametric esti estimation is key. In the very early phase, when you only have your main parameters for your projects, Parametric estimation is the best way. You need to have some historical data that you have to have somewhere, but if you have that, there's nothing beating that method in the early phase. After you enter contract, now we go into the monitoring phase, basic design, detail design. Shipwit is now used as the main hub to gather all the most up-to-date and current weight data coming from now different sources. Now it starts coming in from vendors, from CAD systems, um, things like that. And also, you can ship weight in construction and production, and now gathering the as-built weights, you know, um, from reading of lifting through cranes of sections, weighings, like that. 
and also uh, beyond. When you've used Shipwave for a project and you've corrected the final um, weight database towards the declining test reports, you export this to a historical database and now you have a new project that you can reuse for future projects. Technically, it's a Windows application that runs on a SQL server. And this is a important because it's not an insignificant um, thing that it's a database tool. Our biggest competitor by far, I would almost say our only competitor is Excel. And Excel is a great tool, I love it. Um, and I'll admit that on some projects, certainly you can use um, Excel. But on some projects you certainly can't or shouldn't. I like to use the analogy of uh, accounting. If you, are, if you run a one-man business, uh, small, and you have full control of all costs and, and, and income, you can probably use Excel for your accounting and be fine. Then if you grow the business, you get more people, eventually you reach a point where you just can't use Excel. And not because it doesn't have the functions or the, it might technically be um, possible to do it. But uh, for reasons I'm not gonna go into, here you turn to a database accounting system. And that's just to check all big companies. They will use data-based accounting systems. And maybe the same companies <laughs> will use Excel for the weight control when they're digging huge vessels. Uh, and when you think how linked it is to cost and, and how important it is, it's, it's, to me it's kind of amazing. So. Uh, Excel is our biggest competitor, it's, it's widely used, but it is more prone to errors compared to database system. It's often related to the inventor, difficult to implement across the organization. It lacks security features and user control. It's not very suitable to produce good reports and it's a single user system. And this is just a few of them. I could talk a lot more about the difference between Excel and database, but I have 20 minutes, so I uh, should go on. When you're doing weight control, you need to have a work breakdown structure, a hierarchy of weight groups that you do your estimation and you follow up. And you, should, you need to have at least one. You can have several, but at least one. And there are some standards out there. Um, SFI is a standard that you could use. We have a ship weight standard. You could use the uh, US uh, SWIB standard, uh, which this is a snippet of. Or you can use your own in-house, which is perfectly fine, but you need to use one. And what we do in Shipwright is that we allow you to implement whichever work breakdown structure you select, and then you can attach one or more estimation formula to each of the weight groups in your work breakdown structure. So this then uh, is what you need, in addition to historical data, to do parametric estimation. Flipweight lets you easily bring up the data from past project into a graph to run regression and benchmark and look at ratios between parameter, vessel parameters and weights of historical data and allows you to do parametric estimation, uh, view at different formulas, get different results. Uh, very easy to extract just the project you want. So you are in control of which project to plot in the graph, you are in control of which formulas to use, and um, it's definitely not a, a black book system. And finally, you are in control of which uh, coefficient you extract from the graph into your estimation formula for the weight group. And we recommend to do a top-down approach, so you start on the top, first shot, uh, estimate, whole light chip, then divide into the subgroups. Um, we also have a system for keeping the, the, the top results and comparing towards your uh, more granular uh, estimations. At some, so you start out parametric, and at some point uh, you have to transition to tracking and monitoring, 
and you start to gather single weight items, um, more accurate data. And you also assign these items to a weight group. And one thing that's important is that you, okay, you start to assign now a list of, of identifiable weight items assigned to a weight group, but you hang on to your parametric estimation value until you see that the list of these items is more mature than your parametric uh, estimation. It's very easy to start using the summary of your list too soon before it's complete. But in ShipWeight, you can monitor the difference, and then you switch to use your item list when you see and feel that now this is more accurate. This is all fl very flexible. You can, you can change uh, columns. It's a database tool, but it, it is extremely flexible because you just as, as in Excel, you can add another column. You can actually add another column in ShipWeight as well. So depending on what you want to track and monitor, you set up this user interface for your company or even for your specific project. And this is why it can be used on so many different projects because no uh, company wants to do it exactly the same way. So you can manually input data into this uh, item list, but of course we also have to talk with other systems. We have a very flexible import. We, can, we have some customized tailored imports, but we can also import Excel files, text files, and access files very, in a very flexible way. We simply have a co um, window that allows you to map the information of the files towards the information or columns in ship weight and then do an a import of external data. Very flexible, very easy. We also have like a pro chamber or, or a, if you want to, you can import data into what a sandbox environment. We call it the playground area. And this means that you can bring data in and check them in this sandbox environment before you make it uh, official part of your project. You can also bring parts of your current project into the sandbox environment, make some changes, run what if scenarios, and then uh, prove or reject the change. And this is also a, a good way of um, doing net log changes, um, logging. Then we have a large range of uh, additional features and uh, QA, ways of QAing your database. We can do weight distribution curve in three or three directions, for example. Uh, we are visualizing uh, the position of the central gravity. We can impose a profile of the vessel. We can export this to stability softwares like NAPA, GHS, uh, and so forth. We can calculate moment of inertia duration uh, of the vessel. We can do 3D visualization of the database. Um, in either internally or in Rhino, we have a Rhino plugin, or in Navisworks, we also have a Navisworks plugin. This vessel here is actually, um, this is not geometry, this is just the weight database. This is a, a, a sample ship construction project that was imported to ship weight with the central gravity location, of course, we had the weight, central gravity location, but from ship constructor we also uh, got the extents in X, Y, and Z directions for all items. And then we have a plugin that reads the weight database from the SQL server and plots it in Avisworks. If it finds just a central gravity, it's only going to um, plot the sphere. But if it, if it finds extents, it's going to plot the box. So these are all boxes of the weight database. And since this is now Navisworks, now you can bring in the geometry from the CAD system along with this to append it and do QA and checking. And of course, you can click on an item here and get the ship weight properties up here and do search and you can get your work breakdown structure. It's not showing, but you do that. And we have some ways of color coding it, for example, to put red on heavy items and blue on, on light items and things like that. Monitoring, we have tools in ship weight that lets you easily compare one revision of your project towards the next revision 
and do color coding of uh, like, uh, where the weight's going up or down. So that's easy for you to see. Of course, we have reports that will show you trend lines and show exactly where the weight is going up or where it's going down or where it's, where it stays the same. And we have a very flexible uh, report system. We utilize Crystal reports. We have a Crystal report viewer, which allows us to deliver the report that you want to see. Or if you want to, you can use Crystal report designer and design your own retail, uh, report templates. That's that what it is. Thank you.